There we go. Hi, we're live now. Uh, I'm so excited to be here uh, at Heresis uh, USA. Uh, we have some phenomenal panelists, and I'm so excited to get to chat with, with both of them. Uh, Yemu is a serial entrepreneur. He's an investor and an early adopter of crypto assets, and he's also the co-founder at ARPA uh, and Bella Protocol, which focuses on bringing privacy and distributed, easy to use financial infrastructure to everyone anywhere. Um, and I'm excited to hear more about what Yemu is up to. Uh, also excited to be here uh, with Sam. Sam has actively built and refined and invested in blockchain powered dApps and companies making possible uh, the previously impossible. Uh, so we're really excited to be chatting with with both Yamu and Sam here. Um, and I'd, I'd really love to sort of kick it off by talking about uh, just just maybe 30 seconds uh, to a minute on what most excites you being in this space right now, what most excites you on, about what you're working on. So I'll start with you, uh, Yamu, excited to hear what you're working on now. Sure. Um, well, hi, everyone. Um, this is Yamu, and it's so great to be here. Uh, with everybody. So uh, there are too many, you know, uh, things going on in crypto industry and in blockchain space that excite me. Uh, things are just constantly changing. Uh, a lot of new people are coming in from the traditional industry, like finance and, and tech. Uh, the regulations are becoming more clear. But recently, uh, you know, with the hard sinking news uh, that's been going on uh, in Russia and Ukraine, we see the power of crypto um in you know uh, in in actual uh life and in uh in, in uh in the uh, whole real world right uh, uh there are uh, i mean they are being used to raise funds uh for countries uh they're used to um uh, uh, uh you know preserve wealth and capital for uh for for, for people like you and me so yeah that has been super exciting and um uh, i'm excited to hear more about this from uh, sam yeah, yeah, Sam. Sure. Would love to hear from you. Bit, yes. In fact, um, what we're seeing with support to, you know, self actor, uh, self declared, and otherwise verified uh, groups is just the power of um, blockchains and on chain remittance of value that helps us uh, self organize. And what I'm really excited about is how all the layers of complexity in our communication can be accommodated on chain in the future. Right? If you think about giving for a particular purpose as a one baseline uh, use case, there's so much more that uh, decentralized applications and decentralized autonomous organizations, their governance will be able to accomplish. Um, and I'm fascinated every day with um, the potential we have in and now enabling individuals, entrepreneurs from all around the world to come together and self-organize in um, around particular initiatives of particular value that they care about. Um, so awesome. indeed, consensus Thanks, over Sam. the wire. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. And we're also so excited to have on our panel, uh, Aaron Lee, who's their founder of Quokka. Uh He was an engineer in machine learning at Google Research. <laughs> Uh, working on core machine learning systems, uh, also at Australia's National Lab, and a lead engineer in the founding team at Scaled Inference, which is an AI startup. Um, Aaron, we're so excited to have you here as well. Thanks for being here. And uh, just as the first question uh, that uh, Sam and um, uh, were, uh, that, that folks were answering is, what is the thing that you're working on right now, just in 30 seconds to a minute, that you're uh, the most excited about? Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for having me here and glad to see everyone and nice to see you again, Martha. Uh, well, I'm working on a next generation of wallet. We call it one wallet, uh, which eliminates a lot of frictions in crypto adoption. Uh, for example, uh, seed phrases uh, uh, or this uh, private keys, that kind of stuff. So that people can use crypto safely, securely and easily without having to go through complicated loops. And most, of, most importantly, we are uh, providing infrastructure and uh, the uh, fundamental components let businesses build their own wallets, build their own applications on top of this. So that's what, I, what I've been working on for the last year. 
Awesome. Thank you, Erin. Um, so, you know, our, the, the theme of this panel is uh, a lasting cyber transformation. Um, and, you know, in this space with all of us being folks who are working on um, blockchain technologies, uh, it, you know, the, the first generation is really Bitcoin. Can, can we talk a little bit about what you guys see as the important use cases and sort of technologies in this space of the future that are part of this, you know, quote, cyber transformation? Um, I'll start with uh, I'll start with you, Sam, and then yeah. go to Yuma and then to Aaron. Certainly. Um, so all we do all day is investing in use cases of blockchain. Ultimately, uh, there's enough of the world that uh, believes in it and sees it uh, that there are many funds like us and our investors and companies that we invest into uh, and the, their clients that are paying them to deliver on these use cases. So uh, instead of talking in abstract and, and going beyond this consensus over the wire theme, um, the use cases are numerous. Uh, for we, and probably it's best to talk about particular examples. For example, uh, Symbiont, which is a portfolio company of ours is enabling uh, banks to run on smart contracts, uh, the resettling of collateral as prices of FX contracts change. Um, another company of ours is bringing, uh, Pontoro, bringing uh, communications and uh, secondary markets around infrastructure nodes on chain. Um, Quantstamp is working on a variety of applications that bring primarily financial use cases on chain. Um, Signatize is enabling management of signature corporate authorities, um, where, you know, if you're ever wondering in your organization uh, who should sign on for what, and uh, if you have a complete set of signatures to execute on a corporate action, then you have a single source of truth to rely on rather than cert, you know, reaching out to a corporate secretary who may or may not have up-to-date signature authority lists in your organization. If you're a fiduciary, you always have a hard time understanding who can sign on for what inside your customer. Um, so whenever there is multiple stakeholders, high value, complex workflows, there is um, un value to be unearthed for uh, blockchain implementations. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Yamu, what about you? What are your what's your take on this? Of course. Um, I, th I think we have seen so much more beyond Bitcoin since its invention uh, from 2009, right? Uh, in the past 10 years, well, especially in the past two or three years, um, we have seen numerous uh, new use cases like NFT, uh, DeFi, DAO, GameFi, uh, and so on, right? Um, I mean, I'm just probably going to give a, a, uh, a brief overview uh, for the audience here who are not super familiar with what's going on uh, you know, in a space. Uh, I mean, uh, right? Uh, I mean, for, for example, uh, NFTs and GameFi are bringing uh, in, you know, more, more, user, uh, more new users uh, into crypto and blockchain uh, than, than ever before. Uh, uh, you know, uh, applications like uh, Axie Infinity uh, or OpenSea uh, or Board Apes are you know, uh, attracting um, millions of users um, into the space through uh, KOLs or or or, um, or, or influencers. Um, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, with the uh, impact of uh, of NFT and for games like X Infinity, they're uh, they're designing um, attractive token economics to uh, to bring new users in and um, give them the power to earn extra or additional income. Even in uh, in you know uh, in this uh, uh, global pandemic situation, which I think is very cool and uh, invaluable, uh, especially for the users in Southeast Asia um, who can otherwise you know probably not earn a single dime um, working in um, uh, working in a factory uh, that has been being impacted by the global pandemic, right? And then we are seeing very interesting new use cases such as pay to earn, you know, uh, 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 besides play to earn called walk to earn or run to earn, you know, that there is one uh, new venture that's funded by uh, Sequoia Capital uh, that are essentially enabling people to, to earn tokens um, uh, in real time when they're running, right? So, so that's you know, uh, for, for, uh, for the NFE and GameFi side. And for DeFi, we're seeing uh, the stable coins 
uh, being issued at, at the level of $120 billion uh, total, right? And that's a uh, at least a, a 10x from one year before and 30x from two years before, which is unheard of and quite amazing. Um, and for Uniswap, right, uh, these uh, da- uh, DAXs or decentralized exchanges, they're processing billions of transactions every day, even, um, you know, in this bear market, right, uh, if we are allowed to call it that way. Uh, <laughs> that's actually very amazing with, uh, you know, the total DeFi user uh, right now sitting at 4 million, uh, which is, I-, I think, at least another uh, 30x from two years ago, right? Th- uh, 30 years ago, uh, no, uh, I mean, two years ago in uh, 2020, I think we are seeing only 200,000 or so users uh uh, in DeFi, uh, you know, combined globally. So that's an amazing traction and amazing adoption um, in this uh, track uh, for the two, uh, past two years, right? And now we are still experimenting, you know, how people should better uh, organize themselves and be incentivized, uh, you know, across the whole, uh, across the whole world uh, to fight for one thing. Um, and I think, you know, it, it is going to come into, uh, 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 come into life in the next uh, three to five years. So yeah, all these things are um, are the applications beyond the uh, uh, the original um, use case, which is Bitcoin. And of course, Bitcoin is 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 being widely um, accepted uh, even more uh, nowadays than it is uh, than uh, than it was uh, ten years ago, right? So yeah, it's been uh, quite exciting. Awesome, Aaron. Would love to get your take on this question. Oh, oh, for sure. I'm sorry, I lost connection a little bit, uh, but. Uh, I'm a I'm a more of a technical person, so I, I like to share my thoughts on from the technical perspective, uh, which is uh, we are moving away from a very uh, hackerish or developer-ish uh, software towards something that uh, can be can be uh, <clears throat> more easily adopted by consumers and businesses. Uh, I remember MetaMask two, three years ago is something uh, more like a browser extension from a sketchy website that you can download and install. Uh, these days, it's been uh, installed by tens of millions of people. And, uh, it's still so, very uh, hard to use, by the way. <laughs> uh, it is still hard. To, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, but uh, much better than before. Uh, mm-hmm. And it made it much harder for uh, someone who, who is not technically savvy uh, to be hacked. Uh, so okay. on the safety side, on the security side, it improved a lot. So there's still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, the, uh, I, I think if we compare it to the Web 2, it'll be more like the early days of right, operating system or uh, uh, early days of internet. Uh, the, uh, we, we started to have all kinds of infrastructure designs uh, that are done with uh, compliance in mind uh, as a first instance uh, rather than compared to two or three years ago um, it is more about uh, whether uh, this uh, this is an exciting um, idea or not whether this is um, something is going to change the finance world something is going to change the world it is, I remember two, three years ago, it's more about this. Uh, these days, uh, it's more about whether this is useful, uh, whether this is going to um, connect more people, bring more people into the uh, crypto community or solve the problem. So a lot more practical. And whether this is not going to get uh, the project into trouble uh, in the eyes of SEC or other regulators. Awesome. Well, so this is a really interesting question. And what you're bringing up here is sort of like this idea of what you're, you know, sort of what you think about in terms of these projects, Um, you know, would love to get sort of Sam's take, you know, Sam, as, as, as an investor in the space, what's your mental model for sequencing and prioritizing areas of capital deployment? And where do you see the largest opportunities sooner versus later? Yeah, interesting um, that you brought that good up. Question, Michael. right? <laughs> interesting, good question, right? It's like super on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I think of it as what are the highest value and uh, lowest difficulty use cases, 
ultimately what we are looking for in the eventual equilibrium is identities, assets, and workflows are happening on chain on anywhere it matters to do so with um, high value, multiple stakeholders, complex workflows. Um, and I think of it as what is the, what's the evolution and what, why are, have we seen the evolution that we have? We've seen the evolution start off with mainly large uh, workflows or large amount of assets in DeFi. And I see this not because decentralized finance was the, the you know, largest addressable market or the most urgent need society has, but rather because finance in the assets and workflows lent itself very easily to be on chain. That the substance of finance is it works with declared value assets that have value only because we said so, so that we are all in consensus about how it's supposed to behave. And therefore, it made a lot of sense to make the declarations about asset on chain. Um, whereas on the other end of the spectrum, when you have to bring real world assets, uh, we're not in a position where smart contracts can easily, you know, lock doors of a property or um, disable running of a car if you haven't made your car payment. Um, and so these um, declared value goods have been easier and I see a lot of value accrual on that part of the spectrum. Then uh, before, after the declared value assets, I see digitally rendered services, which will more easily lend themselves for integrating with blockchains. And then finally, and I think the, where we'll unlock the most value is when we enable other ledger assets to be on chain. Other ledger assets such as your ownership records in the county. It's, uh, the ledger is the county record and it represents your ownership of a particular lot or a particular house. Um, and then bringing in those tie-ins for off off-chain ledgers to be on-chain, that's when we'll unlock a lot of the value. And uh, at, to be able to grow with the market, uh, I'm prioritizing you know, DeFi use cases, digital services use cases, such as what you're working on with uh, storage or internet access or um, computation. And then downstream also looking at opportunities to bring uh, these um, whether they be properties or um, uh, other ledger assets in general as the sort of last maturity state uh, and where to deploy capital. Yeah, thank you, Sam. That's actually super insightful and um, uh, awesome. So um, Yamu, moving to you, I'd love to hear, we, we heard a little bit about what you're working on um, at ARPA, but I'd love to hear just sort of like why it's important. Yeah, um, uh, I'd be happy to briefly share with you guys uh, what we have been working on um, at ARPA. So at ARPA, we are uh, uh, constantly looking at building um, innovative and um, useful tools for, uh, I mean, to empower uh, uh, creators and builders on Web3, right? Uh, and we started by, uh, you know, uh, protecting data privacy when, beta, uh, when uh, the data is being used. Uh, uh, using a, crypto, uh, a, 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 a cryptographic method called MPC or Momoda uh, uh, Party Computation. And a subset of that is called Threshold Signature. Uh, and we found uh, you know, over the years that it, it can be incredibly useful in generating on-chain ve 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 uh, verifiable random number, which can then be applied to generate uh, you know, a truly decentralized, easy to use, uh, and uh, cheap um, um, random numbers on uh, random numbers on chain, and that uh, and which can be then used by a project like uh, you know NFT pro projects or gamefi projects to generate and to distribute their on chain assets in a more fairly um, manner, right? And why is that uh, significant? Because you know if we believe uh, in or if we have a strong conviction in a world where um, the, the digital asset class is, is uh, growing 
bigger and uh, it, and eventually there will be a parallel quote unquote metaverse exist uh, you know uh, to our real world then we will both agree or uh, we will all agree that you know all these digital asset classes are um, are, are going to be of more value and it is paramount to uh, to ensure on a mathematical and open source manner that the generation and the distribution of these crypto uh, or, or digital assets are fair uh, and transparent and decentralized. So that's what we are working on. Um, so we are uh, starting as a, a tool for um, the builders and creators on Web3 uh, to generate random numbers and eventually we'll blossom into something else. Awesome. Uh, thanks. And Aaron, would love to hear from you about um, the, you know, some of the, the new products that you see coming to market, you know, you've talked about the next gen wallet that you're working on and, and sort of how the, those products are going to help onboard more people into this space. Oh, uh, Aaron, I don't hear. So there are uh, so many, so many things in the space. Uh, how's my connection? Is it uh, stable? Like, can, it's good. Can you you're here okay? now. You're good. Hey. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Uh, yeah, uh, the most fascinating technology that uh, I see that's creating a very large proof, and uh, people in the space have been talking about it for uh, at least over a year. Been the last, last couple of months that's really uh, turning things around. Like for example, it used to be cost over a hundred dollars now with this uh with zero knowledge proof there are a lot of uh, efficient ways to like for example move things to layer two transaction to one uh, things like that and that really uh has driven the transaction fee down a lot and not only that there are uh applications such as privacy mixer uh that you can see a total privacy of a transaction like for example when you uh, transfer the money from uh, one wallet to another. Previously, uh, it's traceable and uh, it's problematic for a lot of uh, people, for a lot of use cases. For example, if you uh, uh, you want to give out uh, investment or grant money to, to someone, to some company, uh, you, you don't want them to find out how much money you have or you don't, you don't want other people to find out how much money you have. And uh, having this privacy mixer, especially backed by zero knowledge proof technology, uh, really solve that problem. So now, uh, oh, uh, it, it, it's almost guaranteed that the transaction will be private. Uh, of course, it causes some other problems. For example, when an account is hacked, you 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 can't have, you can't find out who did it. Uh, but uh, with new technologies, there's always new problems to solve. Uh, other stuff like. Um, now there are ways to verify your identity uh, or to do something without uh, divulging uh, more than necessary information. Like for example, when uh, everybody uh, had gone to some uh, places where they check around, well, most of the time it's the only need the information that uh, you're over 18 year old. Uh, if you show them your ID, it has a bunch of other information like your name, uh, where you live, and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of times you don't want them to know that. And zero knowledge proof uh, enabled, uh, so provided one way that we can uh, verify something without uh, divulging any information that we don't want to divulge. And now this thing's on chain, like the application uh, can be, uh, there are so many applications that we run out of people to build them. <laughs> yep. Like for you, example, that's, KYC that's... Uh, now can be done in a way. Uh, yeah. Sorry, in, Aaron, in I think I have a delay, way. so I apologize. <laughs> yeah, Aaron uh, is making up for me. Uh... 
Yeah, sorry about that. Aaron, apologies. I think I accidentally interrupted you because of the yeah, delay. Yeah. No worries. Um, no, no worries. I, I appreciate, no, no worries. appreciate your thoughts and um, <laughs> on this topic. And um, and apologies to anyone else if there's a delay on my end. Um, I would love to, you know, two of the things, Aaron, you were, you were hitting on. One was zero knowledge proofs and one was privacy. Um, you know, obviously, um, privacy is a big part of um, uh, the space. Yamu, I would love to get your thoughts on on privacy and 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 Web three. Yeah, um, that is a very interesting question because um, Bitcoin at its birth was not actually designed to preserve privacy uh, on chain. If you think about it, right, um, the whole idea of blockchain is had to have open source, open auditable ledgers to preserve all the transactions that ever happened in the history of a certain blockchain. Uh, means, you know, the, the sender and the recipient uh, and the amount of uh, money that was being transacted, uh, at, 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 you know, at, a, um, at an actual time uh, would all be reviewed to, um, to uh, you know, to essentially around the world. Um, but throughout uh, the years, right, with more participants uh, coming in uh, and with more use cases being explored uh, for blockchain crypto, uh, the the topic of uh, privacy is, is becoming more and more imminent and and and, uh, and important, right? Uh, for several reasons. I mean, I mean, for example, if you are a whale or are you are a institutional investor, or you're just a normal person who are who are trying to buy a uh, a bunch of flour for your girlfriend, right? Um, you don't want uh, you know everybody to know uh, what you're uh, doing, right? Um, and and that will leak, uh, you know, one the informational edge or the uh, the uh, the asymmetrical of information, and two, uh, that is simply uh, exposing your privacy, and and that and and, and that is not your uh, and and that is not nice, right? So um, as Aaron said, the the um, the necessity for uh, uh, for for tools and uh, and uh, you know technical uh, um, methods like zero knowledge proof CKP or uh, you know, you know, um, uh, hardware uh, encrypted um, um, methods, right, um, are are becoming more important, uh, and you know that that's exactly what, what we're trying to solve um, here as well. Awesome. Um, so, Sam, I'd love to I'd love to get your take on on this topic. Um, you know how you think about um, privacy, zero knowledge proofs. And, and also, I would really like a sort of related question. I'd, I'd love to hear what you think are the ways that we can really drive adoption of these technologies and move the world from Web 2 to Web 3. Mm -hmm. um, moving the world from Web 2 to Web 3, I think, heavily depends on um, what, in your domain as well, bringing in regulators to understand what's happening with Web3, Web so that uh, entrepreneurs can be empowered, so that investors can be empowered to act uh, in, in line with uh, the forces that will be. So the, um, if, for example, we enabled the old ledgers um, that are generally Web2, um, to be in sync with Web3 so that, for example, I, we, we initially talk, harped on sort of the county records and real estate. If it were the case that counties enabled us to have a, our own Bitcoin-like lightning network-like subchain that we said, okay, if you wanted to leverage blockchain, we're going to be still the uh, keepers of truth. Our ledger is the ultimate ledger but we can aggregate some amount of the properties in our county for you to on-ramp and off-ramp into this um, you know, higher speed, lower friction, greater programmability layer. We'll allow you to do that. And here's how we accept you to do it and go ahead and bring these assets on chain. Um, that would bring uh, our, the assets and the workflows uh, and the identity is that we have come to understand in the Web 2 uh, to Web 3 and allow the existing infrastructure to really recognize uh, the processes, keep accountable the parties and reduce the friction and, and programmability and enhance the programmability we see um, in Web 3 assets. Yeah. So um, and, sorry, Sam. 
Uh, oh, um, so, well, well, I, I, I mean, just want to add that I, uh, I mean, agree 100% of what Sam just said, and I want to add a couple more points, right? So, um, basically, on a high level, uh, in, uh, I think, in my opinion, uh, in order for the mass adoption form, uh, uh, you know, from Web two uh, to Web three, or the transformation from Web two to uh, Web three to happen, we need uh, at least three uh, points, right? One is regulation, right? Um, just as Sam mentioned, you know, the regulators need needs to understand better what is going on in the space, which is, which is even very difficult for us, the practitioners, to understand. Um, so that imposes uh, a challenge, but uh, it, it's not until the uh, the re regulations are becoming more clear. Will the institutional investors and the uh, you know, and more prudent, uh, uh, not only re re retail investors but but, but, but also uh, but also individual uh, entrepreneurs or builders, uh, you know, will they uh, uh, have a peace of mind to to, to come in and to uh, build right? Um, and, and that's one. And two, I think you know, we need better UI UX, right? User experience and user uh, uh, interaction experiences, um, at least on par with what we have on Web uh, 2 era right now, right? I mean, for example, if uh, we, we were to use uh, a crypto version of Airbnb, that uh, that the app or, or application needs to at least you know be a, uh, be be as smooth or in uh, user experience, if not smoother. Uh, and, and and on top of that, you know, we need to add the power of tokenomics to to incentivize people to uh, to to do what they're supposed to do in the app. Uh, and, and that careful design is very important. And, and we're seeing um, so every time a if a, a, you know a, a phenomenal the app uh, uh, comes to uh, uh, comes to life. So for example, Uniswap, uh, right, or or Bitcoin, they will need to have a very carefully designed tokenomics. Um, uh, which at first might might seem odd to uh, to uh, the majority of us, but uh, over the time it will become more natural um, as uh, as people get more um, you know more accustomed to it. And third one I think is the fiat on and off ramp, right? Uh, and and that goes along with uh, the uh, the regulations for crypto because you know and if. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, exactly, right? Um, if, you know, me as a normal user uh, who wants to get into the uh, crypto space don't have a very fast and reliable way to to convert my RMB or US dollars or Singaporean dollars into crypto, there's no way that I can participate. Uh, I mean, of course I can um, earn the native tokens by uh, contributing my, my, my uh, brain power or manpower in the cases of play to earn and walk to earn, but... I cannot transfer the the uh, my assets in real life to uh, a, a parallel digital world, and that will become a very pro a pro a problematic uh, very quickly uh, uh, if we want to bring more users to uh, the era of Web three or crypto. Awesome, thank you, Aaron. What about you? What's what's your take on this sort of driving adoption topic? Yeah, to to add to the points. Uh, the other two speakers have uh, discussed. Uh, they're all excellent points, by the way. I agree 100%. Uh, I also see a missing gap uh, between the existing crypto infrastructure uh, versus uh, the stuff the business need uh, to integrate and to bring it to their uh, existing customers and user base. Uh, uh, for example, if we are to make a restaurant to accept crypto today, uh, uh, there are many missing elements. Uh, like, for example, what do we do with uh, accept? Um, uh, what do we do with changing that crypto into stable coin? And what kind of account we should set up for the merchant? How do we settle the accounts uh, with other merchants uh, or with banks? Uh, how do we uh, do deal with chargebacks? And uh, how do we pay the supplier? How do we do that counting? There's a bunch of problems and there's no existing software designed to uh, solve this problem or at least making it easy. Uh, things like Solana Pay is a good start. Uh, recently, I think we did a demo about having coffee shops to accept crypto, uh, probably on Solana. Uh, we also have a thing that's... Uh, enabling uh, online merchants to accept crypto in their online shop. Uh, I think there are very uh, 
uh, good starting point. That there's, uh, there's still a lot of work to do. And the reason that I've been working on wallets is uh, I don't see it's just in a wallet. It's really a uh, a starting point for um, for businesses to build the applications that businesses will need uh, to really push this out because different businesses will have different needs uh, as of today. Uh, like in crypto, we often design a product or design one kind of a coin for a bunch of particular purpose. It doesn't really fit all. And we really need tools, and need infrastructures and platforms uh, to enable uh, easy participation for more businesses. Uh, just like what we had in Web2, when it is so easy to make websites or to make a uh, online store. When, when it's become so easy to make those systems, uh, we had a lot of wonderful things. We started to have everything uh, that we can do on our phone or our computer. Uh, but that couldn't happen before we built these tools. Right. Agreed. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. So we're heading into the last few minutes here. What I would love is to get sort of a rapid fire round to close us out. Um, and I'd love for you to just project five years in the future, um, which is like, you know, a, an eternity in, in this space. And tell me, you know, if we get this right, what does the world look like five years from now um, in the space? Um, so I will... Um, I'll go backwards this time. I'm going to start with Aaron. Uh, then I'm going to go to Yamu and then go to Sam. Uh, but we only have a few minutes left. So, you know, tr really tough question because I'm asking you a really big question, but asking you to answer it in like, you know, a few sentences, just like rapid fire, you know, 30 seconds or less. So Aaron, starting with you. Well, that's, I, I guess like I, I would start it paying Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or some other coin and in my co in a coffee shop um, and, and book house with uh, crypto. Uh, I guess like mo most of my daily activities will be uh, done in crypto rather than fiat and I shouldn't be going to banks. <laughs> uh, uh, probably don't need to need banks. Uh, I leave traditional banks to do businesses most of the time. Uh, not sure if you can do it in three to five years. That's probably more a ten-year plan or longer. Uh, but I, I think that uh, we are we are on the on that direction. Awesome, uh, Yamu. What about you? Uh, it, it's it's always so difficult and challenging to predict the future, but I'm uh, going to give it a shot anyway. Um, so we, I think we are in a uh, another infrastructure cycle where we are um, uh, in need of a better infrastructure for the next generation app, which can host, uh, you know, uh, billions of users uh, to to uh, onboard in, uh, to the world of uh, crypto and w Web three. So hopefully. By then, in, in five years, we'll have a better infrastructure in place, whether it is multi-chain crushing or modular blockchains, uh, as we're talking about right now, uh, that can support that level of, uh, of uh, transactions and, and frequency um, uh, for, for, I think, more than 10 or 20% or of the world's population to be onboarded. So that's on a micro level. Uh, and, you know, um, uh, going off of Aaron's point, um, I, I recently uh, started to book my, air, uh, my, my airplane tickets on, uh, on Travala.com. So uh, uh, that is also a, a crypto enabled um, um, method, too. So I'm trying to be w w one of the, fr the uh, first batches to uh, to 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 live my uh, um, uh, to, to live my conviction. So <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, Sam, what about you? What's your take? Yeah, we'll see multiple trillion dollar protocols. We'll find that on a person to person, person to SME, SME to SME, SME to enterprise, our agreements will be on chain, our remittances will be on chain, uh, and even a good portion of our um, intermediation and account keeping each other accountable, means to keep each other accountable, but will be on chain. And I would say more than 50% of world's remittance will be on chain. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that is, that is, uh, that is a hyper specific, those are like OKRs, 
Those are like <laughs> super, like so super measurable. <laughs> yeah, those are like super measurable. Like, yes. like we could actually get like easily, you know, this is all being recorded, so we can yeah, exactly go back and see. Time is being a scheduled tweet five years from now. <laughs> Sam, you yes. said. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And exactly. This needs to be on chain too, Sam. Yes. That's right. As exactly. long as you're paying for the gas fees, I'm happy to come. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Well, yeah. this has been so much fun. It's so cool to get to talk to all of you. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be we'll still be having these conversations together a few years from now. Um, and you know, uh, uh, really such a pleasure to have this conversation. I don't think there's anything better we could, uh, end on. So, uh, thank you guys so much for being here and nice. I'm going to, all right. It'll stop us from screaming, streaming. Thank you so right. much. Thank you.